Now, welcome back to the Harvey Norman Lounge on Pet Corner, Emergency Vet Nurse and Dog Trainer, Kelly McFarlane. Morning. Good morning. So we are talking about the owners, well, pets, worst time of year, really, Guy Fawkes today. Yes. So is it too late to start training or preparing your animal for Guy Fawkes? Definitely not. To be honest, it's actually, this is early. Yeah. Um, so the sooner the better. It's too late when it's actually the night of Guy Fawkes. Which is, <laughs> unfortunately, that's when a lot of us do think about it. We, we yeah. think about it beforehand, but don't think of actual practical things we could be doing for our pets. No, and I think what tends to happen as well is, as people, we completely forget how the animal reacted last year. And then all of a sudden it's back upon us and we're like, oh yeah, that's right, the animal's terrified. Yeah, they don't like it. It's funny because my dog, doesn't seem to mind them at all. So it's not all animals that are scared of them, is it? No, not all. No. But a lot That's of them are. Some. Yeah. So what signs should we uh, need to look for if our pet is scared of fireworks? Um, lots of different things. So for cats, um, they generally want to go and hide, which is a, a big thing. And if they haven't got somewhere to hide, you know, that's quite stressful for them. Yeah. Um, for dogs, um, it might be, again, you know, desperate to hide, um, not eating. Same with cats as well. You know, they go off their food because they're frightened. Mm. Um, if you think about yourself, if you're frightened, the last thing you probably want to eat is a, a meal. You might try and, you know, sneak a chocolate bar, but reality is you, you're not going to want to be hungry. Okay. Do you need, do you see many pets like around this time of year who need medication for their fear of fireworks? Yeah, to be honest, there's a lot of animals, um, both dogs and cats that do or, or should have medication to help. And um, sadly, again, because it's left too late, um, it's much more difficult to be able to, to sort out. And we're talking like a sedative or something just to relax them or? Yeah, so what it is, is we actually use um, certain drugs that don't actually sedate the animal with regards to, um, you know, kind of knocking them out flat mm. because they can still feel the fear. Um, but what we do is just basically knock the edge off their anxiety. Um, and also the types of drugs we use actually gives them a little bit of amnesia so they kind of forget how bad the, the fireworks were. It sounds great. Yeah. It sounds really <laughs> great. Uh, are there any products or anything that we can do at home to help our pets? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, you know, number one anyway, make sure there's hiding spaces for the animals. They need to be able to, to feel safe and secure. Uh, if it's a dog, you know, take them out earlier. Don't leave it till too late in the evening. And for cats, of course, keep them in. Don't, don't mm. let them in and out. Products, you can use things like um, the diffusers, which we've talked about in the past. Um, so there's the Felly Way for cats and Adaptil for dogs. So it releases a pheromone and helps um, calm them down a little bit. Okay. And uh, does closing the curtains make any difference or is it more the noise of the fireworks that's the problem? Oh, look, I think definitely closing the curtains um, can help. And that way then they can't actually visualise and, and see, especially if your neighbours are letting off the firecrackers yeah. next door. Um, again, you know, animals do react to, to the lights. So, yeah, keep your curtains closed. Well, that's the thing in New Zealand, isn't it, too, is that anyone can be letting off fireworks. I mean, yeah. they don't have to be, they can be just right next door to you, can't they? Yeah, and I think if that's the case and you know your neighbours have got pets, even just maybe give them the heads up. You know, we, we don't want people to stop having fun. Um, and it is, you know, and, and sadly at this time of year, there's lots of criticism out there that fireworks should be banned. Mm. But I think preparation is the biggest key. And whatever you do, don't go out for the night to enjoy your fireworks and leave your dog outside. Definitely not, no. That's yeah. the worst thing you can do. <laughs> so you are running consultations uh, to help pets with their firework fear? Yeah, so it's something um, that myself and Alex have, have been talking about and uh, for a while really. He should have been here today, but he's now laid up in bed sick. Oh no, poor yeah, Alex. Tra tragic man flu. Yeah. And um, so yeah, so we're doing um, consultations at Vetcare Grey Lynn and Vetcare Unitech in Mount Albert. They're half an hour appointments. Uh, the clients basically have a five um, question qu questionnaire to complete and, um, and then basically we go from there and, and help them get things organised ready for their what, pet for what fireworks. Sort of uh, number one, getting the owners to remember how the animal was last year, if they've had this animal for a while. Yeah. Uh, looking at how they behave with loud noises and also, um, again, with regards to, to what extreme levels. So are these animals trying to escape and are actually showing forms of phobia where okay. they, they just can't even focus on or anything, their fear like is so bit. bad. Mm. Yeah, or is it just, oh, a little bit scared, mm, I'll just sit near you. So if people want to get in contact with you to book an appointment, what do they need to do? They just need to call 0800 Vet Care. Okay, thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. Now to our pet of the week, congratulations to the gorgeous Cesar and Archie who are snuggled up on their first day together. Look at that, gorgeous. $50 to spend at petpost.co.nz is on its way to your owner, Sharon Gibbons from Waikato. And if you would like to enter your pet, and it can be any type of pet as well, just upload a pic on our Facebook page.